Okay, principles of passion, take one. It's principles of passion. Molly and I share a passion. Hey, I am very passionate. Oh, how nice. It is his passion. Michael and I share a passion. It's a bit of a passion for me. It's my passion. I've learned a lot, and I've followed my passion. Here's your host, Chris Thomas, with Denora Robles and Dominic Semino on intellectualradio.com. Principles of passion. And I think one thing that um, was tough for us was just hearing the criticism, you know, just hearing you know, people talk about what we were trying to do. Um, I want to be clear. We're not, we're not experts on anything. I think, and Dom, uh, you know, you, you help me with this, but I think we're, we're here to learn. Right. Oh, yeah, when, we're just when you here say, to get our points across. Right. Just, yeah. um, open people's minds right. on a level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I want to get on some other people's levels, you know what I mean? Because I feel like um, within the workplace, I feel like there's a lot of people chasing what their passion is, but I feel like there's also the flip side of it where a lot of people are in positions and jobs right now where they are not that passionate about it, you know, and they fulfill their passion in other areas of their life, which I'm, I'm fine with that, do that. But if you could take that to the next level and take it to helping you, helping others, helping you earn a living, you know what I mean? And like, just to really think about that. And I don't, you know, listen, I was, I was, I think I was inspired and, Let's do a recap before I talk about what my inspirations are and inspire me to start the show. Let's talk a little bit just about last week and kind of what, you know, what mindset we're trying to set and where we want to go with it. Don, what do you, what do you think? So yeah, to recap last week, we were just trying to do an overview, uh, give you a little sneak peek about what the season will be about. Um, and then from there, we just try to tell a little bit about ourselves, about our background, um, kind of open up, see that we're not really different from anyone else. We're just regular people. Like everyone's human. Everyone yes, bleeds. Everyone, you yeah. know, dies. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. the same thing. And we're just trying to get our, just trying to tell people that it's not as bad as things are. And sometimes when you find your passion and you might fall off track, you get a little uh, down, you get discouraged and you lose your passion. But you know, you always got to get back on that path. Right. Right. Good point. What do you think, Dinar? I'm along the same lines with Dom. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Good. And I think that's the, that's the hard part. And just in, and again, I, I don't claim to be an expert. I don't want anyone to think I am. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've been in some really awesome environments and I want to continue to put myself in environments where I can learn and I can change and I can be uh, motivated and inspired, yeah. you know, to want to continue to follow what I like or what I'm good at or what I'm passionate about. Um, and so just wanted to really have these open conversations. My hopes are that when we do have followers, <laughs> um, is, that, is that people can call in and, and discuss the areas in their life where they've continued to follow their passion, but stayed true to themselves, um, overcome difficulties, um, and that doesn't mean following your passion. Maybe it's cultivating your passion. Maybe you didn't know then when you were doing it that that was going to be a passion of yours, but you cultivated it. You had people critique it um, and, and you stayed true to it, you know, and that, that's what it's all about. I think that's what life's about is being able to do that, but also being able to follow a certain set of principles that work for you. So this is me trying to tell you the principles that have worked for me. You may not learn from some of them. I'm going to be honest. But I, my hopes are that, that you do learn from some of them and that you learn from some of the stories of the people that we want to bring on here. Because um, I want I want to learn from them. That's my, that's my biggest thing here is I want to learn. I want to be inspired. But I want to have the opportunity to inspire other people. Um, 
So this is me going eco-friendly. I didn't print out any paper today. About I had it last time. <laughs> About time. <laughs> Real talk, my son was sick today, so I stayed home from work, and I didn't get to go to work and print out the – so I have it here. So it all worked out for the environment. Um, <laughs> but, Denora, if you could do me a favor sure. and maybe just recap on the ones that have worked for me in terms of principles, and then I really want us to narrow in on one that uh, I think is the first one that we should start with, and I think we've discussed as well, but I think the one that is the basis for a lot of what we're going to talk about. Um, but, I mean, in terms of the recap, like, which ones did we, do you remember which ones we went through last week? We went through a couple, and they all pretty much, um, was they all kind of aligned with themselves, which um, we talked about being elite. Right. We definitely discussed how education is extremely important in order to pursue your passion or whichever, wherever you want to go with that. And right. then di diligence is the father of pres um, persistence. We sure, talked about sure. that. We talked about the power of networking yeah. and staying organized, setting goals and the resources to use in order to, to get to accomplish those goals, believing in yourself yeah. Yeah. and not letting emotions get the best of you or nerves. And attitude is everything. And that's from mindsets to the actions you take. And then today, we're going to hone in on do the right thing. For sure. Yeah. For that sure. one's a tricky one. It's, it's, it's a tricky one. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I, again, I want to make sure that we keep it to uh, people be like, why, Chris, why are you like all the comments we were getting about, like what you did wrong? Like, Their Chris, why are you be looking down? I'm nervous, people. I'm nervous. <laughs> it's second episode. All right. I'm nervous. I'm looking down to focus on what I got to focus on. And everyone can all do right? it. Yeah. Well, right? everyone I'm can just do saying. It. I'm yeah. just saying. Um, but in terms of being able to hone in on doing the right thing, you know, I think that it, that can get taken into different environments, Definitely. right? What we want to try and do is keep it to the workplace environment, all inclusive, um, diverse, and all accepting of, of anyone's point of views and how they would have to handle situations in a workplace setting. Um, and I think that's the best basis to start with. Um, in terms of doing good, you know, what, again, one of the things that brought me to trying to start this and trying to open my mind up a little bit to other people in terms of some of my flaws, but also some of the things I'm trying to get is, you know, I was at my last company I, and I didn't feel like I was fulfilling my philanthropic duties. I really didn't. And I said this in the first episode, I'm getting closer to it. Um, I had a surprise for y'all. I'll keep that on the low. Stay tuned <laughs> till the end. Um, but I'm getting closer to it yeah. because I, I want to give back, you know, and I love staffing and I have a tattoo on my arm right here. It's a clock killing a hundred dollar bill, right? And it, time kills all deals is what it's supposed to mean. Wow, and nice like, I'll, I'll always be a recruiter, but I've also overcome some things that, and don't get me wrong, there's people that have overcome way worse things than me, right? Um, what I want to bring this conversation to and like the whole point of uh, why we're trying to bring open minds together is to talk about how to give back and how to use your, your mindset to influence you while giving back or while inspiring yourself, or while inspiring people around you, or while taking those inspirations or those passions to a point of making money Yeah. at the end of the day. Um, so I met Dom, I told you this, Year Up. Dom, tell us a little bit about Year Up. I know you didn't get a chance to do this a lot in the first. Uh... Well, uh, <laughs> Year Up, well, first off, I have to say that I'm very appreciative of everything they've done for me very grateful but europe itself is a it's a nonprofit organization it's an accelerated year-long program where the first six months it focuses in three lines of work it's either client services project management or cybersecurity. so i um that's where it gets crazy but i'll save that for the end okay. um so like europe was that was the first um six months they taught me what i needed to learn from my 
for my internship and then and I that was, was so that first six months was in like a classroom setting yes right? okay yes it was with other people so i had to it was like working with colleagues they really set you up for corporate america it, um <clears throat> very strict just like it would be in a natural working environment right. and um from there i built a bond with these people i got to know them i got to know the staff and everything and they were beyond helpful and it's anyone for 18 to 24 like for me I knew I had a passion. I knew I wanted to do something. What was your passion? My original passion was psychology. Okay. <laughs> Believe it or not. Okay. Likewise. <laughs> Likewise. Okay. Go but on. um life took its toll, you know, and um I went to college for a little bit, but you know, financial instability happened and I, I couldn't do it. And this program came along and a couple of buddies that I knew from high school did it and they pass it on to me and I did it. And how it works is they nominate you. It's like an interview. You go for a whole interview process, like a job. All right. So I did that. I got in, I stuck with it strong and thoroughly. And I got converted after the whole internship and I would not have been able to do that. So just for those of you that don't know, and, and I apologize for cutting no, you off, fine. but when he, when he says converted, not to another religion or anything. <laughs> oh, <laughs> listen, here we go. listen. So he was working on a contract contractual basis mm -hmm. uh, through Europe, and mm -hmm. after his six month internship, they converted him on full time, which is that's that's what it is. That's what it's about. It's about trying to get people into the job market that would not have had that opportunity before. You know what I mean? So sorry to cut you off. I just wanted to make sure they were clear about what No, that, you're definitely yeah. right for doing that because I completely forgot. I apologize, yeah, it's, beautiful it's good, people. <laughs> um, so yeah, they gave me the opportunity that I would not have had otherwise. And I think the best part about it is it's like now I'm like stable to the point where I could finally give back because I always wanted to know that like doing psychology, that was like a passion. Right. You could have more than one passion. It's like my passion is people. And like it's it helps me every day in the workplace right. because I get to demonstrate how much I enjoy working with those people. And that's a strong principle fueling my passion. That's awesome. Awesome. Did you know anything you wanted to add to that? Anything? Is it, uh, don't feel forced. Don't feel forced. No, not at all. Yeah. I'm just yeah, I'm just taking it all in. Um so good. No, that that's mm -hmm. good. So just to recap on again, what what things that have helped me in the workplace. And this is really, I, I think what motivated me, I say prompted, but motivated me to start this is thinking about some of the things that I've messed up on, that I've done good on, and trying to hone them in onto a few things that I can do really, really well. Um, I am not as successful as I want to be in my life, but I am pushing every single day and following my passion to make sure that I attain that success. And so what they are, are do the right thing. Attitude is everything. Don't let your emotions get the best of you. Believe in yourself. Set goals. Stay organized. 80% of, excuse me, 85% of all jobs are filled by networking. Diligence is the father of persistence. If you don't have an education, you better have a craft or a lot of money. And even if you have all three, nothing is guaranteed. And lastly, be elite. I want to thank my current managing director, Jim Goodmiller, for uh, inspiring me to that part of being elite. Um, that, that's that's a tough one. We're not going to focus on that one today. What we're going to focus on is doing the right thing in the workplace, right? There's there's emotional things. There's personal. There's all these avenues that people can go in terms of determining what their moralistic code is, so to speak, right? But what we, I think we really want to focus on today is as you try and follow your passion within the workplace, right? And again, not to downplay anyone that's following their passion outside of the workplace, mm -hmm. but what can you do further with it? You know what I mean? And so as we try and look at that that point of no return of I'm going to make a career out of this. How do we navigate the you know the corporate environment? You know I think that's really what we want to stick to um, as a whole for today. Doing the right thing, um, Dom. What 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 do you what do you think is doing the right thing? 
water. So <laughs> it's just water, people. I'm drinking water. When I hear do the right thing, a lot comes to mind and it kind of ties in with the emotions almost, you want to say, because you're emotionally attached to do the right thing. You feel like you like some sort of like necessity to have to do that. And like, cause you want to like, you never know what's going to happen and how people react to it and doing the right thing. So like when I hear do the right thing, it has to be like completely without emotions, but still like morally inclined. Right. Okay. What do you think? It's a personal choice. I think it's a personal choice and it, it, it's more or less of what are your values? What's your, what do you define as your integrity? And that would help you define and drive to do the right thing that's right for you. Because sometimes when you do the right thing, you may have to stand alone and you have to be okay with that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's, and that's, um, that's, that's hard to do. <laughs> to, to have a lot of self-esteem. Yeah. It takes, um, yeah. And, and especially in a couple of different avenues if you're trying to start a new career yeah and you're trying to fight for what you believe and you're trying to stand alone but then also if you're trying to reinvent yourself within a current career and you're trying to stand alone and trying to and listen if you are good at following some of these principles um if you're good at just being you and loving what you do you're not going to be alone. Yeah. You're 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 just not. It's it's people it's not going to happen. Yeah. Right? People flock to people that they're good at. Yeah. Um and if you're if you're that passionate about certain things, you're going to be in different forums and different conversations and different communications with people that are equally as passionate. Yeah. And if you're not, then get there. And if you're not there, then maybe you should question whether you're passionate about it. True. I'm just being yeah. honest. Um, but that's, I think that's some of the defining layers of, of passion and, and how you start to navigate it is it, does it, does it drive you yeah. to want to do something different the next day, you know, to want to interact with someone differently? Um, so again, we're here on intellectualradio.com. If you so decide one day to call in <laughs> 708-223-8953, follow me on your passion one st your passion first dot com. What's your you got you got that Instagram? What is it? What is it? My Instagram? Yeah, you weren't prepared for this. <laughs> he That's just not really on called list. me on on my Insta what's your Instagram. Yeah, no, we're listening. I don't have <laughs> one prepared. yet. No, not yet. Yo, follow my vibe. Follow my vibe. What's yours? Um, yeah, if you guys want to follow me, I spread a bunch of like positivity videos, Domo Exodus, photography, a little poetry, just yeah. self motivation, all motivation. Everyone needs it. Yeah, that's it. And that's again, that's what this is about. Is about trying to motivate ourselves right like yeah. i'm here to learn honestly i'm here to have open conversations about some of the things i want to achieve some of the things that i haven't believed yet you know what i mean and try and have other people join in on those things and be a positive motivation for people out there that are searching for their dreams yeah. searching for things they haven't really believed yet yeah. Um, and you can, you can turn on any TV and you can hear about people that are up here already yeah. making millions of dollars talking about how they've got there, but you don't hear people that are in common IT security analysts, IT security administrator, help desk, uh, finance analyst, you know, healthcare medical coder, um, office manager you don't hear those people talk about Goodbye. what some of the areas are in their life that have challenged them that have been barriers for them while still trying to reach their goals and some of those people may be in jobs that have become their passion some people may found passions in other areas so how do we connect with the people that are regardless of what they're doing today they're still following passions in their life and how do we get them to come 
and just talk with us. I just want you to talk with me <laughs> about how you overcame certain hurdles in your life while still trying to attain those passions. Um, so last week, and, and let me stop because I talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Do y'all have anything that y'all want to add? I want to add on just some definitions about passion, but like anything. I don't know. Denor's been kind of quiet. <laughs> oh, on the spot. Denor had a long day at work. <laughs> oh, when, when, when? Because it was my passion. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, no, I mean, I really don't have anything to tap in right now, but I guess it, we were talking about the topic of doing the right thing and, and going from there. There's been many instances in the workplace. Actually, my whole job was based on doing the right thing. And I, well, I'll share the story with you, with you guys. I, I worked for this corporation. I was a project manager for them. And part of my mission, quote unquote, was to go as an undercover dental assistant to uncover, you know, just to see what was going on. In other words, to see if there's anything that, you know, is breaking regulations. Any discrepancies or. Yeah. OSHA or and so forth. Sure, sure. A lot of corporations do that. A lot of dental corporations do that. So they sent me undercover and walking in, there was a dental assistant that was working there for about 17 years. And she was OSHA trained. She knew everything in regards to that. Patients loved her. The team loved her. The community loved her. Sure. But they came to a point that um, when I was, she was training me, she wouldn't sterilize the instruments. So there was blood on the instruments mm -hmm. and she would use them on the patients. Well, unethical and Unethi obviously breaking some OSHA oh. laws, so to speak, or rules. And I can't break my cover. Right. So I just have to just kind of play along with it. Right. So I had asked her, aren't we supposed to sterilize that? She's like, we really don't have the time right now. We've never been inspected. Let's just keep pushing through it. Never been inspected. Or never. Inspected. <laughs> and this happens very frequent. So what, really, that I was my job. That, at every that was okay, my job. I was people. the fixer. I was right. the Olivia Pope of the dentistry world okay. uh, at the time. Uh, so, <laughs> so she again. I couldn't break my cover. I couldn't like blow my cover. So. The next day, instead of being in scrubs, I came in my business suit and my business attire and I sat her down. And I'm like, we, we really have to have a conversation. And I explained to her that she broke the regulations, she broke the rules. And she came to me and said, well, can you just give me a chance? I've been here for 17 years. I, you know, can you just give me a chance? Don't report it. Right. And I promise I won't do it again. Doing the right thing is finding her right there, like letting her go and terminating her position right, right, right there. Right. Um, then I continue. I actually asked her, what was the right thing to do in that scenario? And there was crickets. Yeah. She stood quiet. So she found it upon herself. Yeah, you know, this yeah, is the best choice. Yeah. But it did ruin her career, unfortunately. Right. But so once she ended up letting herself go or she pretty she, much. Right. I think I don't I didn't even have to say anything right. in that regards. Right. So after that, and when even I, if you would have said something, yes. right? Like mm -hmm. that's that's a tough situation to handle. Like, how yeah, do you like what would you say in that situation? And I'm not asking you for an answer really. Yeah, I love one. But sometimes those situations are it's tough case by case, you know, but what like what if you could go back and do it again? Like, what would you say to her? There's really nothing to say, because after 17 years, you should know better and do better. Right. And you and it's not like there wasn't any guidelines or regulations. They were there. And if you really did have a passion for the work that you were in, you will try to do the very best right. to you know, be the best for your patients because they're first. Right. So when I mentioned earlier about standing alone, after she was terminated, the patients were upset, even though I was doing it for the patients because they didn't see her again after 17 years. These are repeated sure, patients. Sure. The team was upset. So it kind of created tension in the work environment. So who else to dislike and hate? Well, hate's a strong word, but dislike would be the person who let her go. Yeah. So I had to stand in my truth. Right. And yeah, that was a good scenario of like doing the right thing because in most instances, sometimes people say, well, let's just turn a blind eye. It is what it is. No one really knows about it. Just give her a second chance, not ruin her career, but right. she ruined it for herself, unfortunately, yeah. by doing those, by making that choice. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, that's a tough one, man. That is a tough it one is. about yeah. uh, just trying to do the right thing. I don't. I, I feel like none of us can sit here and say that we've always done the right thing. Yeah. Um, I think that we're offered some leniency when it mm -hmm. goes into the workplace environment, right? And like if we were going to take it on life as a whole, then we could list 4,200 religions to go through. Not trying to do that. Not trying to do that. We don't want you to do um, that. <laughs> uh, listen, not trying to do that. Like just trying to bring yeah. it real to the workplace environment because that's where we have to interact a lot together. Yeah. Um, and people aren't of the same religion. They're not of the same race. They're not of the same culture, of the same passions. So how do you navigate that environment? while still staying true to what you're passionate about and maybe not what you're passionate about, but what you're trying to uncover um, in terms of what you're good at and what you want to get better at and how much you're willing to sacrifice as you do get better at that. Yeah. And that's, that's what we want to keep this to is how do you handle those barriers and hurdles as you navigate the work environment while you're trying to still follow your passion. So, um, so you mentioned last week, one of the definitions you looked up in terms of passion, yes. and I want y'all to bring it back just a <laughs> little bit. Um, we're going to keep it going. We did a little break last week. We're going to flow all the way through this. Probably won't take up the whole hour, but again, we're here on intellectualradio.com. This is principles of passion. You know, we're just trying to talk about a, what we're passionate about, yeah. how we're going to continue to follow our passion, but we want to hear from some folks out there at some point about what you're passionate about, what inspires you, what hurdles you've overcome as you've tried to stay true to that. And that's not, we've all, we've all, not us three here sitting all, everyone has gone through things in their life that have been challenges. Us three here, we're lucky enough that I think a lot of those were based on choices we made yeah. versus things we were lacking in life or resources we were lacking. But I think we both saw a little bit of both too. Yeah. You know, so we, I think we want to be true to that um, emotion, mm. right? Is what the definition is, I think you said last week, of passion. Yes. Yeah. It's emotion based yeah. and it can go either way. It can go to a negative place or a positive place. Right. So, yeah. And it's driven by emotion. It's driven by feeling, which yeah. is triggered by my thought. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Thought. That's huge. Yeah. People don't think about that. Um, Dom. Yes. So the other, so there was three that I read that I thought stuck out to me. The second was intense striving or overmastering feeling. Or conviction mm. kind of on the spot here because i was going to ask you to talk about that but how would you tie that into emotion as it relates to passion in the workplace man that's that sounds like um it could be a lot it can almost sound like um for lack of better terms um like anxiety you know like a lot of things are coming at you you're not you don't understand how to how to feel like what's going on you're trying to keep up with the tide but when it comes to in that aspect, I would just say it's hard. It's not easy at all. Right. Don't get me wrong. It's yeah. like sometimes you have to take a step back and understand that like you just need to breathe and just understand what's going on and then take that step forward. And that can apply in the workplace, in your passion, in your regular life. It's just there's always something there. But as long as you take a step back and really evaluate it before you react to it, you should you would be okay yeah. in my opinion and i'm just saying that because that's works for me right. i can't say that for everybody but it also ties back with the emotions too because you don't want to let your emotions get the best exactly yeah yeah Bingo. yes yeah you're hitting right on that head for sure so that's uh that's my take on it yeah that's what i would say yeah it's like you just you have to breathe and take a step back sometimes what do you think pretty spot on yeah for sure. <laughs> yeah. And and like that's that's hard it, to control your emotions. I mean, we're going to have mm -hmm. a whole nother episode about that. Um, all these tie in together, right? That's why I said there are things that have worked for me. Mm -hmm. Some of them have worked for you. We want to hear from y'all. Some, you know, some y'all, I'm not from the South, but let's, I'll talk how I want to. I'll talk how I want to. Uh, you all, my grammatical folks. You, you all, y'all. <laughs> 
Um, we want to hear from y'all too, though, <laughs> about some things that have have helped you. You know, yeah. we want to learn from you. Um, the third one was, and we're still on emotion. Obviously, we're still trying to get to doing the right thing. We wanted to do the recap because all of this is about following your passion in the workplace, yeah. right? Um, an outbreak of anger was one of the ones that it said Emotions. on Miriam. This is, listen, let me, let me scroll back down. Hey, I'm technologically advanced today, people. Um, Miriam's Webster, Mir, sorry, Miriam Webster's dictionary. Um, you know, good source. It said that an outbreak of anger. Outbreak. What do you, Dinara? What do you oh, think? Uh, As that we pointed to me. <laughs> Dinora, <bro. laughs> um, outbreak of anger. Passion. Outbreak of anger. Like, how are there similarities? How are there differences? How can that be misconstrued? You know, that's a that's a tough one. Yeah. That's a tough one to say. You're yeah. allowed to pass anytime you want to. I pass. <laughs> We're going to yeah, start to learn I, what Denora so is good at talking about and what she doesn't want to talk about. We're going to learn that. <laughs> um, wow, that's rough. You can pass, uh, too. You can pass. But I, I would love to hear like your insight. Like playing Uno. Oh, off the top. <laughs> like the skips. Reverse, you reverse. only get so many. <laughs> reverse. <laughs> reverse. When I hear that, I hear... Um, I kind of hear rage like that's the first thing that comes to mind that's like how i would associate a definition and a sudden outburst of what anger. Do, what does rage mean to you that mm -hmm. definition that you gave me a sudden outburst of anger and like uncontrolling but, hey, so don't use anger to define it what does rage or anger mean to you can i help with that and let me let me rewind it are they the same because rage doesn't have a connotation of negativity to a certain extent, and anger does. So I would prefer you define rage first. We kind of get anger, right? Okay. There's not so rage though, the neg the not so negatively connotated. In rage, I would say having um an emotional blackout. You just Ooh. not you. Yeah. You just went on a tangent. Yeah. And like you said, it doesn't have to be mad. It could be anything. It could be excitement. It exactly. could be happy. Right. Just out, out of rage. I did it out of rage. Mm -hmm. What's well, an expectation that wasn't met? I mean, that's what rage and anger is. It's an expectation that you had in your mind that wasn't met. So you need an outlet for it. You might use the wrong words and the, wrong, the wrong expression. Way. Yeah, right. the wrong expression. Yeah. But everyone lets it out differently. So yeah, it's an expectation that wasn't met, and you're reacting towards that it. That is that is well said. Thanks. Um, because I don't mm -hmm. know if we think about um, how do I want to say it? Emotion yeah. being attached to expectation, because mm -hmm. a lot of time emotion is that's how we react. Yeah, that's not what we are expecting to do as we reacted. Um, and so that's interesting. That's that's interesting yeah. that you say that. Um, I think that that's is, all it really has has been. If you really think about it, so sometimes it's hard to not take it personal because it's just that person wanted something that you couldn't deliver, which is not fair to you. Let's say you're the employer. Right. It's not fair to you because you're not responsible. Thank to you for reminding employer because I was starting to like <laughs> personal. No, 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 no. Personal it's, about well, it. I mean, work relationships are kind of <laughs> yeah, in yeah, its yeah. own it has bounds, sure. but but that is actually you know in the workplace people do take it in a personal space, and you have to kind of remind the team, listen, it, it's it's not personal. There's boundaries. I right. there's expectations that you have that I might not be able to meet, but the other company next door may. I don't know. Right. So if it gets that way in the workplace where there's rage, then that needs to be taken care of. It's acting out of happens a lot. Non logic, basically. Yeah. Just acting on emotion and um not mm -hmm. stepping back, like Dom said, and yeah. then just sifting it all through. Which is I yeah. think the most important thing is how do we how do we think about things before we act, you know? Mm -hmm. Um so do the right thing regardless of religion race nationality or gender all people are created equal um dom you kind of explained a little and we don't we don't have too much time left which is good uh, we started <laughs> late 
No. <laughs> That's a first for Chris. No, no, listen. <laughs> So what we were trying to do is make this a bit more concise. I think we we're all over the place last time. So anyone that watched more than 30 minutes of our last show, thank you for your attention span, first of all. Uh, <laughs> we were in there. And, <laughs> listen, and, we're pretty and just exciting. Thank you again. Um, no, we're again, we're not we're trying to it. be here to yeah. enlighten, so to speak, but to inspire, yeah. not just on our stories. But mm -hmm. we hope that people will call in soon once we go through our marketing campaign. Working Thank on that, you. we need to get comfortable Thank with you. ourselves first. With ourselves first, all right. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Um, but our hopes are that we go through these ten principles, mm -hmm. and then after that, we can start bringing on uh, professionals in the space, right? Mm -hmm. That aren't CEOs, that aren't CIOs, that don't have these big stories to talk about, but that have accomplishments to talk about and struggles that they've overcame while trying to reach those accomplishments. And I think that's important to point light at that because I don't think there's enough talk about it. Um, I think we're scared to boast, so to speak. Yeah. But I think at the end of the day, the more stories you can hear that can inspire you that are in the same industry that you're in or similar industry, or maybe not even similar, one that you've never heard about, that's what we want to get you to open your ears to those type of stories and how it's not an easy world out there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We just want to create a platform where people can talk about the not so easy part and how they overcame it while they were trying to get to the easy part, which is success, right? That's what we're all looking for. Yeah. Um, blah, blah, blah. I talked for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Real talk. That's no, how we're doing it now. You guys, so we're, we're talking about doing the right yeah. thing. Um, you guys kind of gave me some insight on what you think the right thing is. Mm -hmm. um, we got about, you know, 10 to 12 minutes left. I mean, what, I, how do I want to word this? What, what do you want to talk about in terms of right thing? And what do you think would inspire people out there as it relates to doing the right thing in a workplace environment hmm. and how to make some of those tough decisions. Is it really hard to do the right thing at work though? I was just thinking about that on my drive here. I'm like, is it really that hard to do the right thing at work when you have guidelines, red tape, whatever? It's there, it's spelled out for you. Yeah, yeah. You just have to follow through with it. Yeah. So you, ex yeah, how would you? I, so I, I'm, thank, thank for asking <laughs> you're I'm welcome prepared. i've prepared <laughs> oh great uh, no what do you like what would you say to that um and you can b bounce past do whatever shift it reverse back reverse path, whatever you want to do or op speak openly i want it to be open and but not force about doing the right thing in yeah. the work setting in the work setting i think or school setting no yeah, work setting, school setting, um, setting where you have to deal with uh, people of all races, religions, and walks of life. I think it they all kind of go hand in hand, to be quite honest. It's like doing the right thing is just doing the right thing. Like if you have a responsibility to do, you know you have to handle it a certain way. And if you don't, then is that really the right thing? It's The way I see doing the right thing is like, how much does it weigh on you at the end of the day? Yeah. And if you feel something inside that you know it'll weigh on you, then I feel like that's kind of like a sign that says it's the wrong thing and you know better. Like as a person, that as just gut, a human. Kind yes, of that gut feeling. Right? Yes, exactly. And yeah. like you said, regardless of whatever your background is, just at the end of the day, it's human. And everyone has that morality that tells them, what's right from wrong in their own way right right um and that that's great man i think that that speaks a lot to um the humanistic view that you bring to the table um which i really appreciate i appreciate it. Um, thank you and it's i think it's one that we all all three of us bring to the table in terms of how to understand people as a whole yeah um it's i wish it was that cut and dry Right. And I'll tell you just a little small story, um, little small redundancy. Shut up. Um, a, a story that I, I feel was a hard decision for me to make about right and wrong. 
um, that doesn't leave it so cut and dry, right? Um, so I was at, at the current company I work at. I was trying to get sponsorship. So I'm on our volunteering board. It's called Advancing Futures, and I was trying to get sponsorship to sponsor Year Up, actually, for the Bud Billiken Parade. And we wanted to like walk and have a flow and just do it. Like I thought it would be really cool being that they're staffing, we're staffing, mm -hmm. you know, you guys are internships. I think advanced resources is, is staffing, you know, that next step up after the internship. Um, and yeah. so I wanted to sponsor it. And so I brought it to the board. It got passed, right? But they decided to go with some, some other thing that they were going to pick up lakes. Right, pick up garbage around lakes. I say that to say with my pompous face, okay, a little snarky of me to to say anything about lakes. I didn't think about how I presented. I didn't I didn't think about how I, I was upset that it got passed on because I was thinking everything else, right? Instead of the one thing that I could control, yeah. right, is how I presented it to people. Okay. And I didn't do a good job of presenting it. Um, at that time, though, while I didn't do a good job of presenting it, I was that passionate about continuing to help out, help students, help organizations okay. that are helping students get into the market. And so I pushed it to the next level. I was, I was like, sorry, I don't agree with that. So I went to the head of the volunteering committee. I said, I don't, you know, here's where I feel like we can really help. Here's where we can brand ourselves a little bit. I don't think we're doing enough of, of this type of interaction with organizations mm -hmm. like this. Here's my case. Pass on again. I, I took it to the owner and I said, I here, and I had to state it in a different way. Mm -hmm. I said, here's where I feel that our mission can be complete if we do more things like this. Okay. Right? Um, it got passed. Now, I don't know if that was the owner. Or I don't know if it was the HR person in charge of our volunteering committee that got it through. And I still haven't asked yet. I was just happy that it went through. Um, but there was a point in time where I felt like I wasn't doing the right thing, right? Because it got passed twice. I'm like, I don't want to ruffle feathers. I'm in a sales environment. Um, I want people to like me, right? Had I not been staying true to my passion of doing what I feel is the right thing to do, it I wouldn't have pushed that second and third time to get it passed. And I wouldn't have um, had an opportunity to get to know the people that said no's and get to know the people that said yes. You know, I wouldn't wow. have had, I just wouldn't have had those. A no would have just been a no. I would have been mad. I would have been upset about it. Um, and so that was just for me a time where I feel like it wasn't between right and wrong. It was between kind of a right and uh, am I going to push past the right? Am I going to settle for the no? You know what I mean? And like, again, that's that's what we're trying to be here to talk about is how do you push through those situations had I not had like I, I cried to my mom I, I draw tears to my mom crying about this situation about how do I handle it what do I do and that's one of the principles we're going to talk about is having that support system but at the end of the day and another principle you got to believe in yourself you got to believe in what you're passionate about yeah. is you, like you're willing to die for that and I the marine in me saying die, what it is, right? But you got to be willing to lose sleep over it. Yeah. You got to be willing to sleep four hours a night instead of eight hours or six or whatever you get. Um, and like that's that's what it's about. It's about that grind. It's about fighting through that BS yeah. that was gonna come at you. But at the end of the day, you got to fight through it. It's a good you know? feeling, though. It is. It's a really good feeling. That adrenaline. When you're passionate about something and you stay up, like you mentioned, like four hours or I mean, like, yeah, no sleep. Yeah. Or two hours or not sleeping. To and see like, that end result. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. So it's so worth it. Yeah.
for sure. And it doesn't feel like work, so. It doesn't. No. It doesn't. What about you? Anything else? I know it's getting hot in here. I know. I know. <laughs> we'll get a in next time. I'm just taking it all in. It We're was... on like, I mean, we we wanted to go 45 minutes. We started about seven to 10 minutes late. We're about, about there. Um, mm -hmm. I think it was a good show. I think we improved. I think that's our goal is to start something new on our own that we're all passionate about. Yes. We all have jobs that we have to keep, hence the <laughs> mild tone. But I think we kept it conservative but real. I'm good. <laughs> um, and again, you know, we're here on intellectualradio.com. Everything you hear will not be intellectual, but we appreciate <laughs> the, the airtime and just the ability to try and reach out to folks that have gone through certain hurdles in their life how they've overcome those and how they stayed true to their passion. Um, I'll leave you with a quote, Monty Irvin. He's one of the first African-Americans in the modern league leagues. Um, and he was inducted into the hall of fame in 1973. He said, early in life, I learned just through observation that right always wins out over wrong. If a person has good intentions in his heart and mm -hmm. wants to do the right thing, then there are certain ways that any obstacle can be overcome. So we appreciate y'all listening. Um, we didn't get callers. We want you to call in next time. We're we starting have to, to get, market first. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get some marketing uh, campaigns going here. But we wanted to get comfortable first. We didn't yes. want to bring y'all a bunch of nonsense, which it's still a bunch of nonsense because it's all things that as a community we mm -hmm. need to talk about. Um, but it gets kind of circumvented in its little different pillars of yes. religion, of politics. And we wanted to keep it religious and pol politics free and really just talk about Neutral things ground. in an open forum that are comfortable, relatable, um, and that hopefully inspire us as well as you. So thank you again, my co-host. I don't think I introduced Denora. Hey. And my boy, Dom. I appreciate y'all time. Thank y'all.